Hey friends, what's up? Welcome or welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you a little bit of a tutorial when it comes to Google Calendar and specifically time blocking in Google Calendar. So I've mentioned this a lot on the channel before where I use Google Calendar quite frequently and I've used it for many years, but there was a specific time where I was working for myself full time uh, and I used Google Calendar for everything. It was my entire life and time blocking was such a huge element in my productivity during that time. And while I don't follow this technique 100% anymore, I do feel like it is extremely valuable to share with other people who might find some benefits in time blocking and using a tool that is really, really great for time blocking. So that's why I'm going to be sharing this tutorial with you. I'm going to get right into it, but before we do, I just wanted to mention that I'm going to be sharing my screen. You can kind of maybe see it over there. So you'll see me in a little box in the corner and I'll be guiding you through everything that I'll be talking about. Let's get right into this. All right, friends, here is Google Calendar. So I wanted to start this video off by sharing with you what my actual Google Calendar looks like right now. It's a bit of a mess and it's a little chaotic, but to be honest with you, I have not been keeping up with my Google Calendar. I have been in a productivity rut, which I have talked about in last week's video. So this is what it looks like when I'm not really <laughs> focusing well on it, but you know, this is what it looks like in reality. And I just wanted to share that with you, but in addition to this, I'm going to go into a completely blank example, which is this right here. And this is where the tutorial is going to be in this blank example so that you can visually see it and it'll be really easy to follow. So uh, like I said, this video is only going to be about time blocking. But if you're interested in any other elements when it comes to Google Calendar, just let me know in the comments and I can do another video on that. But yeah, I'm going to get straight into it. Firstly, with basics. So the basic thing that I want to share is this little section over here up top. And apologies if you see anything cut off. I tried my best to keep everything in frame, but it's just the formatting of, you know, the, the video. So uh, I wanted to share that there are different ways to toggle and view your days and your months and your weeks. So you can get as minimal as a day in a glance. I think of this in bullet journal terms. You can go to week in advance or week at a glance. <laughs> and then we have the monthly view, which is like a standard calendar. And then we have a year at a glance. So the Google Calendar website is defaulted to a week at a glance. And this is what I'm going to be in for this tutorial because it is the default and it's easiest to follow along. There's also a monthly view in this corner over here that you can toggle to back and forth on, but it won't affect your grid over here. It's just sort of like a reference in the corner. So like I said, I'm going to be going through uh, a whole time blocking session with you. And so I'm just going to time block a full work day uh, as an example for you. And in my profession, the profession I'll be using in the example is content creation. So I'm a content creator. So it's the best example for me to share. But of course, this is customizable for anyone. And you can definitely, you know, structure it however you wish. But I am going to do an example where uh, let's say, let's just do Thursday because today is Thursday that I'm recording this. So I'm going to do a full work day for Thursday and I'm going to structure this in a way that I have a monthly, no, not a monthly. I have a morning newsletter going out in the morning. Then I have a blog post that I need to draft and finalize before it gets posted on Friday. And then I have some social media stuff that I have to do throughout the day. So let's get right into it. I'm going to structure this in that I have my breakfast in the morning, say for an example, and then my workday actually gets started at 930. So as you can see here, you can click around on the grid and you can start plopping things in and it'll show you a bit of a preview. So I, like I said, I'm going to click in at 930 and it shows you a bit of like a, a quick view or a, an easy view. It's not a detailed view, but it does have a lot of stuff that you can do right from this initial click, but you can also click into more options and it'll share with you a full length screen where you can fill in a lot of details. So this is what I prefer to do. And uh, yeah, let's get into it. So the first thing that I'm going to do is finalize my newsletter 
for the morning because it's gonna go out in the morning, but I just wanna make sure that everything looks good. So I'm going to do that between 9.30 and 10 o'clock. Just gonna take me 30 minutes from start to finish to do that. And then I'm going to add a notification for myself. This is one of the most important things in this tutorial, at least the way that I do time blocking. I'm going to put a notification to get sent to myself 15 minutes in advance of 9.30. So let me just explain what just happened. In the top here, I wrote in the title section, I wrote down the task that I'm gonna be doing. In this section here, I just picked a time frame. So I picked about 30 minutes to get this task done. Uh, and then I went all the way down to notification and the notification is very simply like, how much in advance do you wanna be notified before this thing gets uh, started. So I put 15 minutes. 15 minutes is usually my default. So, you know, you can choose however much you want, but I put 15 minutes there. And essentially what is going to happen is that this task is going to get started on my calendar at 930, but I'll be notified 15 minutes before 930. And I do that so that if I'm doing something else, if I'm having breakfast or whatever, I'll get notified at 915 a.m. that I need to get started on finalizing my newsletter at 930 so I can get mentally or physically prepared for that. And then the last thing that I do in this section is just add notes if necessary. So I can put things like proofread, things like um, copy links for a link in bio. And these are just little notes for myself if I, if I need to refer to them. This is not a, a complete necessity, but it is super, super helpful to have. So those are the only things you really need to focus on when you're doing time blocking. This is just for your reference. So it can be as simple as this. And I honestly keep it as simple as this. So I'm going to hit save. And there you go. We have a literal block on our calendar right now. So from between 9.30 to 10 o'clock, I have finalized newsletter. I should also show you, and by the way, you can always edit this after the fact. I should also share that color coding is a big thing that I really love. I like to color code based on the thing that I'm doing. So if I have to do five things in a day for the newsletter, I would keep those all in the same color and just, you know, organize in that way. So I'm going to color the newsletter with this pink color. And there we go. Uh, Google is giving me some suggestions. Okay, so then from 9.30 to 10, I'm gonna finalize the newsletter. And then from 10 to 11, I am going to post the newsletter. So I'm just gonna write in here, post newsletter. 10 to 11 is the time frame, and I will give myself five minutes in advance of a notification. The reason why I have a shorter notification here is because I just finished finalizing it, so I don't need a huge uh, advance notice because I'm already kind of working on it as is. I'm gonna change the color to pink again so that it sticks with the same whole uh, newsletter category, and then I'm gonna hit save because I don't have any additional things I need to add in there. So. Now you're starting to visualize what time blocking actually looks like. Um, after I post my newsletter, I am going to work on that blog post I said that I want to work on for tomorrow to be published, Friday to be published. So I'm gonna write draft blog post. And I'm gonna do that from between 11 to 12 o'clock. I'm gonna take about the, an hour to draft that, give myself 15 minutes in advance notice, and I'm gonna color that orange. I'm also gonna put some notes in here for what photos do I need, just as like a prompt for myself, SEO, just, you know, content creation examples. All right, and then I'm gonna hit save. There we go. Now from 12 to one o'clock, I am going to post on Instagram. So I'm just gonna write Instagram post and then from 11, uh, 12 to one, and then I'm going to do 15 minutes yet again. And then in the notes here, I'm gonna just highlight that this is not literally just hitting post on an Instagram post. This includes editing the photo. This is caption writing time, hashtags, and then 30 minutes to engage with followers. 
So even though I'm putting on the calendar a whole hour just to post on Instagram, there's a lot more that goes behind it and I'm just filling that out here in the in the comments so that I am aware of that, even though I am already aware of that, but you know, just for example's sake, I'm going to color that in yellow. And there we go. Now, here's an important thing that I do and I've always done and I highly recommend. I always add in my lunch break. Uh, break time is super, super important. And if you just time block like this and you completely forget to put in your break time, you can easily just lead yourself into burnout and you can easily just become distracted with all the tasks that you're doing. And it's just not a healthy thing. So schedule in your break time. It is just as important as any other thing that's on your calendar. I'm gonna put that in bold red. I have 15 minutes for my notification and then I'm gonna hit save. Now, just to give you a clarity on the notifications, like I said, it's just gonna notify you 15 minutes beforehand or whatever time frame that you add in beforehand. And I prefer to do notification because it sends sort of like a text message to my phone. It'll ping just like a text message. And of course, whenever we get a text, it's we check it immediately, right? So it is definitely helpful for me in that sense that it sends it as a text almost. Uh, you can also send it as an email if that's preferable for you. But for me, notification always, always, always helps me. Sometimes it even pops up on the screen if I'm like using my computer and my calendar is sending me notifications. So. I, I highly prefer doing um, ping type notifications as opposed to emails. So just a heads up on that if you were confused about that. But after lunch, uh, from 2 to 3 p.m., I am going to do TikTok. And 2 to 3 p.m., again, it seems like it is a long period of time, but it's very similar to Instagram and any other social media thing. Uh, we have to do editing, we have to do hashtags, we have to engage with the community. And so simply posting on social media takes longer than, you know, a couple of seconds to hit post. In case you were not clear on that, I just wanted to clarify that. But I'm going to do the color light green for TikTok. All right, we are nearing the end of the day. So from three to 4 p.m., I'm gonna start working on my blog again. Like I said, my blog post is getting posted on Friday and I'm writing this on Thursday. So I have a tight deadline there. So what I'm gonna do now at the end of the day is finalize my blog post. So, so from three to four, I'm gonna do my 15 minute reminder. Um, so from three to four, I completely forgot the color. I think it was orange. Um, I am going to add in my photos. I'm going to proofread, make sure everything looks good. Um, fill in any blank spaces, just little tidbits here and there, just to make sure that the blog post is ready to go and ready to post on Friday. And hit save, was I correct? Yeah. So as you can see, the two pinks have to do with newsletter, the two oranges have to do with the blog, and then the other colors are for other things. Now from four to 5 p.m., we're gonna end the day by checking our emails. And I'm gonna leave that at blue, 15 minutes in advance, and I'll put something like, uh, add brand deals to Notion. Just some sort of example there. All right, and then the last thing that I'm gonna do, five to 6 p.m., this is more of like a personal thing, but meal prep dinner. This is just something that I used to personally do. I used to add it to my calendar so that I wouldn't forget, but there we go. Do you see how quick that we did that? We just time blocked an entire day's worth of work in just a few minutes time. So we're starting the day off by finalizing a newsletter and then posting it, and then all the details that go into it, such as like sharing on social media and stuff like that. Um, then from 11 to 12, we're gonna draft a blog post. There are some notes in there for me to reference. By the way, I'm just clicking on the, the block and it comes up as like a, a quick view. 
just like how we did before. So very, very intuitive. You don't need to click a billion times to get to the info. All you have to do in the beginning is fill everything out. Um, from 12 to 1, we're going to do our Instagram posts and all that goes in between that. From 1 to 2, we're going to stop doing actual work and go enjoy a break. From 2 to 3, we're going to have a TikTok post go up. Finalize our blog post um, from 3 to 4 so that it's ready to go on Friday. We're going to check some emails to end the day off. And then we are going to log off and go meal prep dinner. So there it is. That is what a whole day work of work looks like when it comes to time blocking. Visually, it's super pleasing. At least for me, it is. I love the color coordination. I love being able to see these notes. And again, the 15 minutes beforehand notification is such a lifesaver when it gets sent to your phone. It's like a text message. Uh, so I highly recommend doing that. Um, I will show you what it looks like on a, on a full day view. I don't know why it doesn't do it automatically. You can also click here. But there you go. This is what the day looks like. So sometimes I will pull this up on my phone and it will literally look like this. Just super colorful and pretty and fun. It has all of the info in there so that I can look at it through my phone. And um, yeah, that's this is what your day looks like. Of course, it doesn't have to look as full as this, but I just gave like a, a huge example with a lot of things that needed to be done in the day. Um, and then again, this is what the week looks like. This is what the month looks like. It looks like a much smaller little list, which is also really visually pleasing. I think Google Calendar does visuals fantastically. And if you're into the scheduling toggle mode, which I'm not personally, uh, this is what it looks like. It almost looks like a, a to-do list. So if you're into that, this is what it looks like. But that is what time blocking looks like. Again, if you have any questions on this, let me know in the comments. I can definitely clarify anything for you. I kind of wanted to go through this quickly because honestly, it's really, really simple to do once you get the hang of it, once you start clicking in and, you know, following along, following the prompts, it's so, so easy to do. So highly recommend giving this a try if this is something that you might need in your life right now, or if you want to give it a try in case your planning methods aren't working for you. I've used this when I worked um, full-time by myself and I've also used this for other companies and stuff like that so it's it's really accessible and I highly recommend but that is all for this week's video thank you so so much for being here and sticking around and I'll talk to you in next week's video mm -hmm.